Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome back to Rick Answers His Email. I'm going to try to blow through a lot of email today, so I'm not going to read them as thoroughly. You can pause the video and read them as you like, but I'm just going to answer the questions. The first one is from Bill, and Bill, the answer is yes, the links are on the website. There's a little area at the very top that says podcasts. Naomi is looking for an answer on our website that is there. Just go back to helpmerick.com, Naomi, and search for msconfig, msconfig, and you will find it. Rod is just sending along a thank you for linking up to Foxit Reader. If you're not using Foxit Reader and you're still using Adobe Reader, I highly recommend dumping Adobe and trying Foxit Reader. Rex has a new laptop given to him by his nephew and wants to connect wirelessly, but he's having trouble. I'm going to suggest, Rex, that you go to either the library, which has free wireless, or go to our local coffee shop, which always has someone on wireless. Buy somebody a cup of coffee, and I'm sure you'll find someone who can teach you how to hook up wirelessly. Craig's writing in that he has a lot of his family slowly converting over to Mac, which is making a lot less problems for him as kind of the family troubleshooter. But his mother-in-law recently bought a laptop with HP that has Vista Home Premium, and it's having trouble connecting to a wireless network in their home. So there's a couple things I would try first, Craig. One is I would go into the Manage Wireless Networks in Vista, and I'm sure you've been there already. Delete the network altogether. Delete the saved network that's in there. You may have tried that already, but do it again. And then go through this website here. This is Microsoft's troubleshooting network problems with Vista, because it is quite a bit different in some cases than Windows XP. And the address is here, this tiny URL. Go to this tiny URL. It'll take you to that troubleshooting spot. And I think you'll get yourself back up and running. Then he goes on also to say in his email, that he's a EPC user like myself, EEPC -E user, and he said he's enjoying it immensely and that his wife has adopted it so he bought her a small HP because she needs to run Quicken and he uh, gave a little bit of shout out to her website, drmarymusic.com. You can check it out if you like. Thanks, Greg. Jerry received a 19-inch widescreen monitor for Christmas, hooked it up to his computer but the resolution that it wants to use is not supported by his video card. And that's the, what the bottom line is, Jerry. You need to go to Dell's website or go to ATI, which who makes the Radeon, and look up your particular device, which is the Radeon 7200, and you're going to find that more than likely that 1440 by 900 resolution is not supported by your older video card. So the only way you're going to get the best picture out of that particular monitor is to buy and replace, buy a new video card and replace your old video card. Maury has a problem with his memory, his RAM, not his memory, but his computer memory, RAM, with programs telling him that there's a bad spot in the memory and then it hangs up his machine. And the RAM, the little chips inside your computer that provide temporary space for our computers to compute, if there's a problem in one of those pieces of RAM, it will cause these kinds of these kinds of issues. So the only thing you can do, Mari, at this point is either replace the chips that are in there or run one of the memory testers that are out on the market. If you just type in RAM memory tester on uh, Google, you'll find a bunch of them and find out which of the chips is the bad chip. And more than likely with, with the prices as low as they are on RAM, for example, go to crucial.com, run a memory test there and it'll tell you what type of memory you have, how much memory you can add and what type of memory to add. Spend the 50 bucks or so, get rid of the old memory, put in the new memory and you should be up and running. Richard is a new Gmail and iPhone user, and he's having problems with deleting email from his iPhone, but it's still showing up on his Gmail account when he logs in through a computer. And if you're setting up your Gmail account from the settings and then email and then setting it up as Gmail on your iPhone, you should be syncing it up properly. I have a feeling what you might have done is set up your email as a POP3 type email on your iPhone and then therefore when you got into Gmail it wasn't necessarily syncing properly because of extra settings you might have to set. The other thing you can do is enable IMAP, I-M-A-P, on Gmail. Just go into settings, go into accounts and then you'll find a place in there where you can enable the IMAP and then set up IMAP on your iPhone. Again it'll make sense once you get into there and you should have no problems. 
Dolores has a few questions in her email today. First of all, she says, wondering if there's a Linux way to do a lot of the things that I teach on the website at helpmerick.com. And of course there is. I am slowly adding Linux tutorials to my website as well. So I'm glad you're even interested in it. Thanks for asking, Dolores. Then she's asking about my thoughts on Spyware Doctor. I'm not a big Spyware Doctor fan. I think it is a legitimate program. It does seem to do a pretty good job at keeping the spyware out of your system. But it is, as you mentioned in your email, a huge resource hog. It will slow down your machine. So instead, definitely I would use the AVG run spybot search and destroy manually maybe weekly or bi-weekly and you can also put other products on there like super anti spyware and another new one i found lately malwarebytes.org is a good product as well neither of which slow down your system nearly as much as spyware doctor and then lastly she's asking about internet access she's in west texas it doesn't sound like maybe you've tried dsl usually dsl through your phone company is the most affordable way to go to a high speed connection so i check that out Thanks. Shirley has an interesting question about defrag, and she's trying to figure out how to get more than 5%, and she says I should have 15%. I'm not sure where you're getting those numbers, if that's the free space on your hard drive, which is fixed. Even with a defrag, you're not going to recover much free space, because it's just going to combine the free space that's there. But what I would suggest doing is go and do a, a disk cleanup on your system before you do the defrags. So go to my website and download either CCleaner or Cleanup. They're both in my links and resources section at helpmerick.com and then try again. Good luck. Rita is a local cable service internet user and has had problem loading certain websites in the last few weeks. And our local cable service, I've noticed, has been giving out a separate what's called DNS server. And they must be having some kind of a problem locally because up until a couple weeks ago, everyone had good service, had good speed, and then all of a sudden speeds have been reduced locally as well as ability to find certain websites. So call your local cable service company. Rita, in your case, it's Bresnan, obviously, and have them walk you through their, hopefully it will be a temporary fix, because it shouldn't be something that should be long term. Betty has switched internet services, and she's having a hard time figuring out some of the new things that have been presented to her. She's a longtime AOL user, but now it seems like they've navigated her into, a, into Yahoo. And what I'll tell you, Betty, is if you're on a high-speed internet connection, you can continue to use your AOL if that's where you're comfortable, and you don't have to pay any extra for AOL. Just call AOL or go online and go into the billing area of your account, and you can convert your pay account to a free account if you haven't already canceled it. Now, the other thing you're asking about how to send email via or send pictures via email. You have a bunch of pictures, and you use Picasa to manage those pictures. I would, instead of doing a Yahoo account, go into Gmail. Go to gmail.com, sign up for a new account. It works flawlessly with Picasa, and at least you'll get that part of it solved very quickly. Ralph is having the same problem as one of our earlier emailers had talked about. She's a Bresnan customer who is having problems reaching certain sites. You need to call Bresnan. They're going to give you a temporary fix, which is a DNS server. Merrill is one of the many people getting PowerPoint attachments to his email, and he can't open them. Go to my website, go to helpmerick.com, search for PowerPoint or even PowerPoint Viewer, and you'll get the tips and the links to where you can download the free PowerPoint Viewer. Jerry's wondering if he can convert his HP Pavilion DV9000 back from Windows Vista to XP. He's not enjoying Vista, and the answer is probably not. Going backwards, especially this late in the game with Vista to XP, is getting harder and harder because the drivers for your video and your audio and your Ethernet and things like that are becoming more and more scarce, so it's harder to move them back to XP. Bill is having a problem with duplicate address entries in his Thunderbird address book. So what I'm going to do, Bill, is send you to this website. Go to this address, and it has a great tutorial on how to back up your address book and back up your profile in Thunderbird because more than likely what's going on is you have a corrupt address book and you need to rebuild it so it doesn't continue to duplicate those addresses. Carol was cleaning out her computer and found a program called Learn to Player and she's wondering if it's something she needs. If you don't think you're using it, you can probably get rid of it. More than likely it came with your computer as some kind of a tutorial add-on. I know back Gateway and Dell back quite a few years ago used to add on some tutorial video tutorials for learning how to use your computer and they use the Learn to Player. So if you're not using it anymore, it's perfectly safe to get rid of it. Bonnie is having trouble defragging her computer. Bonnie, to solve your particular problem, just shut your computer off, 
boot up into safe mode by pushing F8 once you start turning the computer on, get into safe mode, spy sweeper should be pushed to the side, and then you can run your disk utilities from there. I jammed through a lot of email this week without reading most of the emails. Let me know whether it worked or it didn't work by leaving a comment below or on my website at helpmerick.com. Thanks a lot. See you soon.